Good morning, my name is Josh from Cyclops Oz, and here is your detailed forecast update nationwide for April 12th, 2025. It's the weekend, and we've got rainfall streaming in from the Coral Sea over in northern Australia through the Gulf of Carpentaria and into a developing tropical cyclone now situated over the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf, just outside of the Northern Territory in WA. This system up here is getting its act together quite nicely, and it looks like we will have our next tropical cyclone in the Australian water sometime later tonight or into early tomorrow morning. It's definitely going to happen this weekend, and considering the fact that this system is now looking quite impressive, I reckon it is going to happen sooner rather than later. If this tropical low, which is designated as 29U, does pick up the next tropical cyclone name on the Australian naming list, which it's pretty much all but guaranteed to, we'll be seeing this name Tropical Cyclone Errol, which is a name that I want everybody over in Northwestern WA to be listening out for over the next couple of days. Let's talk about this system in much more detail right now. You can see it's drawing quite a lot of moisture from the north. It's sliding down, down into the Darwin area, and we've had some good thunderstorms around the Darwin area overnight. They moved just towards the south, and we have had some pretty good rainfall accumulations in the southern reaches of Darwin out towards Humpty Doo, those sort of areas. And rainfall accumulations have also been healthy along the Melville and the Bathurst Island stations up there. Significant rainfall accumulations aren't expected to continue and the rainfall is going to ease off as the storm pulls further away from the coastline and moves further out to sea. This system here is expected to then move offshore from Western Australia as we head through to, uh, or throughout later today and into tomorrow. And you can see as we zoom out into the, uh, the bigger picture just type things moving through the Timor Sea later on tonight, becoming a full-blown tropical cyclone by the looks of things sometime tomorrow as per what the major forecast models are suggesting and then intensification properly kicks in through Monday and into Tuesday. The forecast is becoming a little bit more certain with this system here. You can see that intensification continuing through Wednesday before that hairpin turn that major forecast models are suggesting uh, sometime around Thursday the 17th of April. It's going to happen around the Rowley Shoal sort of area so a little bit further towards the north and a little bit further towards the east than what we were expecting uh, initially and then this system being pulled back into the Kimberley region where a landfall is possible on Saturday somewhere between 80 Mile Beach up through Broome, Derby, Koori Bay and up to about Columbaroo. Major forecast models are now really pulling into the conclusion, the conclusion that the landfall if it does happen on the WA coastline after that hairpin turn is going to happen sometime between the 17th and the 20th of April somewhere between Port Headland up to about Columbaroo. So we're really starting to hone in on some of these locations right now and I do reckon just my gut feeling is if this storm does go in for a landfall it's going to be a much weaker system of course, tropical low category 1 status and it's going to happen somewhere around the Broome or the Derby area. Uh, the GFS forecast model caused this system pretty much to die off as it approaches the coastline. You can see that hairpin turn happens a lot further out to sea, and as such, this system struggles to make it to the coastline at any reasonable intensity, and it kind of falls apart before it makes that landfall or gets uh, reasonably close to the coastline. Considering that the storm is going to have some pretty good conditions ahead of it, especially initially through uh, Sunday right out towards about Wednesday or Thursday until it makes that hairpin turn, it will be able to intensify substantially, and I would not be surprised if we were looking at a severe tropical cyclone or even a Category 4 strength tropical cyclone cyclone raging offshore from WA and as such if once it does make that U-turn we will be seeing a much more stronger system because it'll have to weaken a lot more as it approaches the coastline and we'll likely be seeing a stronger landfall of cyclone or significant tropical cyclone status somewhere around the broom area. It's the same deal with the other forecast models as well they're kind of calling for this U-turn thing but the axis I mean take a look at the axis forecast model this is a really weird run here so it does highlight the fact that whilst we are now honing in on some of the details as I play through the axis G3 forecast model here we're still very unsure on the forecast forecast models themselves are also very unsure. So my general uh, recommendations right now for the northwest corner of Western Australia is watch but don't panic. There's no need to be making preparations at this point in time because take a look at this. The axis is taken with this system basically right over where it formed back up into the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf over towards Melville and Bathurst Islands and then it makes that U-turn once again and then draws it down into a more sort of uh, normal motion much later on into the forecast period. So it is the forecast models don't really have a clue what they're talking about at this point in time and as such we're really struggling to make uh, as any kind of reasonably accurate prediction. So for those between Port Headland up to Broome, Koori Bay, and uh, as far north as Columbia on the coastline, watch the forecast situation very closely. And if you are interested in seeing coverage on a landfall for this tropical cyclone, then probably check back around Tuesday or Wednesday, and we'll have some definitive answers on this system here. If this system does swing in for a location, it, we're going to have plenty of time to uh, get prepared, but I reckon we're going to have less time than we initially thought uh, in terms of the specifics for a landfall, just considering the fact that we're not 100% sure still where this system is going to make a U-turn. It's a confusing forecast, it's a difficult forecast, so again, check back in on the next couple of days and we'll have some more definitive answers. Generally speaking, the forecast models pull their fingers out once we start getting uh, a tropical cyclone in the making here, and we are now starting to get that, so the forecast modeling is now becoming a lot more reliable, which is very good news indeed. We've also got another developing tropical low in the Gulf of Carpentaria, and you can now start to see some convection, and it's taken me by surprise how much convection is really beginning to blow up around this system here. It is still a very broad low-pressure system, and it is obviously 
probably not at any point in the next couple of days expected to get itself together and become a tropical cyclone but you can see as we play through a six hour radar and satellite loop if that does decide to load for us this morning it is looking like plenty of convection and even a low pressure system is beginning to develop now just offshore from Groot Island where this rainfall is beginning to spin itself up so it's actually looking a lot healthier than what we were initially expecting and because we are now seeing this low pressure system beginning to develop here and we've got the good outflow coming out towards the southeast that's why rainfall accumulations haven't been as heavy as what the forecast models were suggesting for much of far north Queensland don't get me wrong uh, the danger has picked up some decent rainfall accumulations overnight and I'll get to this in just a few minutes but that's just kind of a precursor at what's to come for far north Queensland the rainfall hasn't been as heavy as what we were initially expecting up there and I'll get into detail about why that is in just a second so this system here now beginning to get its act together and you can see as per major forecast modeling it hasn't been initialized on the forecast models just yet but the eastern wave calling for this low pressure system which is attached to the monsoon trough right now to head slowly towards the north up towards Nullanby and Cape Wessel throughout the remainder of this weekend and then really begin to get its act together once it's well out to sea north of the northern territory uh, into the Timor Sea I believe through Monday and in towards Tuesday this system then beginning to develop through Tuesday and into Wednesday and it will have a chance of becoming a tropical cyclone albeit a moderate chance at this point it's not exactly a significant chance before it tracks over basically where it's developing right now down through Cape Wessel and Island by down through Groot Island and then off towards the Robinson River sort of area. It kind of keeps itself in the Northern Territory waters and uh, to be honest at this point in time I don't really foresee this being a significant impact to Queensland apart from the Gulf Country in terms of rainfall and maybe some strong gusty winds here and there but at this point in time this doesn't look like a significant storm impact for Queensland but certainly something that I'm going to keep close tabs on on the next couple of days. The GFS forecast model interestingly is saying pretty much the exact same thing. I mean if we at any point especially out towards next week if we at any point uh, contrast the East Middle Earth and the GFS forecast model, uh, this is incredible stuff. This is great congruency uh, between a storm that hasn't even developed yet properly. So the GFS and the East Middle Earth now really bringing it out now with this tropical cyclone. And there's some great congruency here, which gives me a lot of confidence in this forecast, even though this system hasn't properly formed it just yet. But you can see keeping it in the uh, Northern Territory side of things, that landfall sometime between the 18th out to about the 21st of uh, April. And that will again get uh, kind of confined to a specific date pretty shortly. Somewhere between Groot Island across to about Mornington Island by the looks of things as a weak category one or category two strength tropical cyclone. In short, this system really not expected to be problematic at this point in time. It will be incredible if it does get up to a significant intensity. We haven't had a Gulf of Carpentaria tropical cyclone this cyclone season. Uh, so there is plenty of fuel out there for the tropical cyclones to make the most of. And you can see sea temperatures 30 pushing 31 in places. And then once, down you, uh, once you get down to the Carpentaria coastline, pushing 31, pushing 32 in some places. Uh, so still very warm and plenty of fuel for these tropical cyclones to make the most of but I do reckon that this system's just going to be too close to the coastline to properly get its act together in any significant manner which is good news at least for the North Queensland and the Northern Territory. That's not to say though that some significant rainfall accumulations aren't on the cards. I mean take a look at this this is over the next 10 days and some really meaty rainfall accumulations are on the cards. It's a low pressure system, it's tropical and it's going to be very slow moving and stagnant over pretty much one location throughout the next 10 days and as such rainfall accumulation has actually meant to be a lot higher than what we're seeing on this forecast modeling here. I would not be surprised if we saw 10 day rainfall accumulations beginning now out to the 22nd of April up around that 1000 millimeter mark for Nolan by and Cape Wessel. This is going to be a very good late season wet uh, deluge for them. Even Groot Island could see a couple of hundred millimeters and down towards the normally dry Borulula and Robinson River we could be seeing rainfall accumulations up around that two to 300 millimeter mark as this system comes in for a landfall. Rainfall accumulations will be lighter on the Queensland side of things but northwest Queensland could get a good helping of rainfall. For those in flood impacted southwestern Queensland the rainfall is going to stop at Mount Isa. It's not really going to head further south of Mount Isa. Uh, laterally speaking, Mount Isa could still pick up a couple of hundred millimetres if this system does track over, but I'm not expecting significant rainfall contributions to the uh, already flooded and really frankly struggling rivers over in southwestern Queensland, which is some very good news and news that I'm very happy to report on. Also, much later on into the forecast modelling, you can see a third tropical low slash tropical cyclone could form in the Cor uh, Coral Sea. Model support for this one is a lot more flaky, and you can see between major forecast modeling here. The GFS has it over in the Solomon Sea. The Icon forecast model calling for it to happen around the uh, Torres Strait Islands and then moving into the Coral Sea much later on into the forecast period. The Axis is the only one calling for a full-blown tropical cyclone sometime in the next couple of days over in the Coral Sea and I reckon this is kind of a bit of a bullish forecast at this point in time and one that's not likely to happen. What I reckon is going to happen is that the system's uh, tropical cyclone Errol which is developing right now in the Joseph Bonaparte Gulf and then the system developing in the Gulf of Carpentaria, they're going to steal the 
thunder, literally speaking, and we're going to have a dry looking Coral Sea. If we do get a tropical cyclone developing in the Coral Sea, that will mean rainfall for northwestern Queensland, so we're going to have to keep close tabs on that. But if we are talking about that right now, uh, it doesn't look like much rainfall is on the cards for the northeastern and northwestern Queensland over the next 14 days. And you can see that with the major forecast modeling here from the Eastern Bluff. Rainfall accumulations really don't pick up, and the majority of these falls are actually happening throughout the remainder of this weekend. It actually looks like it's going to be relatively dry uh, week uh, after about mid next week. The rainfall is expected to really ease off, and as such, for far north Queensland conditions will be a lot drier up there. Let's talk about that right now. You can see 14 day rainfall accumulations. Let's just go through them and hammer them home right now for the Daintree up around that 200 millimeter mark here on this forecast modeling, and then between 80 to 150 millimeters into the Casper Coast around Innisfail. Uh, it does look like the Daintree is going to be consistently wetter now as we head into the later months of the wet season, and especially considering they're more northerly focus. Uh, with the rainfall that's streaming it up in extremely far northern Queensland up around the Lockhart River area, it definitely looks like uh, the Daintree is going to pick up the majority of the rainfall there, and really only a couple of showers here and there over down on the Cassari Coast over the last couple of hours as a result of the rainfall streaming into the Coral Sea. So rainfall accumulation is really not heavy there at all, and even into the Daintree, they have been quite disappointing over the last 24 hours, and that's just because of the outflow from these systems here really pushing and weakening off these southeasterly winds, and you can see them. Normally when we're talking about showers, we're talking about winds around Arlington Reef can be up to around 50 or 55 kilometers an hour. Right now they're at about 35 kilometers an hour, and that's kind of as strong as they've gotten over the last couple of uh, days as well. They were a lot stronger last week actually out of the southeast. They've really begun to drop off, which is why we haven't seen much rainfall and much shower activity being picked up from the Coral Sea and jammed into the Cassari Coast or into the, the Daintree Rainforest. And it's one of those cases where far north Queensland, the rainfall situation up there can be extremely volatile. They either pick up a thousand millimeters or they pick up squat. And in, in this case, they have for the first time pretty much this wet season picked up on the side of squat as opposed to the absolute deluges that they've been seeing over the last couple of months. So I guess that is a breath of fresh air for them at this point in time. More showers will continue throughout the remainder of today and those winds are still out of the southeast. So expect showers and rainfall to be intermittent here and then. Uh, showers will actually pick up a little bit later on this afternoon and into early tomorrow morning. We could be seeing a bit of heavier rainfall streaming into the uh, Casper Coast through earlier tomorrow morning and then showers continuing from the southeast through tomorrow night into uh, Monday morning. And it just looks like steady streams of showers through Monday and into Tuesday before they clear off by around Wednesday. And like I said, that return to that dry condition with some sunny breaks expected through Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right out to the end of the forecast period. Didn't see any rainfall on there as we get out towards the 10-day forecast and the 14-day forecast period. So again, it is looking high and dry much later on into the forecast period up in far northern Queensland. Good news to them. And like I said, a breath of fresh air, certainly something that I imagine that they are looking forward to up in poor old soggy far north Queensland. Uh, just down in the southeast of Queensland, the northeast of New South Wales, some str uh, showers streaming ashore at this point. You can see some heavier showers moving through uh, the Redcliffe sort of area up north of Rabi Island at this point in time, moving through Caloundra. Those showers there have been carrying some pretty significant rainfall accumulations or some pretty significant rainfall rates and accumulations haven't been too heavy, but certainly some deluges here and there. These showers, the typical stuff that you see at this time of the year, streaming in from that high pressure ridge that is very solid right now over New Zealand and those uh, easterly winds bringing in those showers and it is rather miserable weather right now over in uh, the east coast of uh, New South Wales and Queensland, especially across southeastern Queensland, those showers are now beginning to really pick up and it's going to be this trend throughout the remainder of today while it looks at things, showers continuing, storms here and there as well. In fact, they pick up throughout the course of this afternoon and then they contract to the northeast of New South Wales through tomorrow morning and ease off by tomorrow afternoon by the looks of things. Still a few showers here and there through Monday and into Tuesday, but those winds and showers will begin to drop off by tomorrow afternoon and as such, the rainfall will be a lot lighter through early parts of next week before hopefully a return to some clearer conditions offshore from New South Wales and Queensland. They're very soggy up there and they don't need any more rainfall. So again, it will be good if we see some uh, clearing conditions there just to dry out a few things. Uh, but yeah, those showers expected to be continuing. And like I said, non-problematic rainfall. We're not even expecting more than about 50 millimeters of rainfall here. And you can see on the forecast modeling throughout the remainder of today and into early tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning, the rainfall accumulation is really nothing to be running home about at all. This is 24 hourly accumulations up to about 40 millimeters. A lot of the rainfall has actually already fallen. But again, a good deluge tonight could bring some flash flooding here and there from these showers. So expect some big puddles throughout the remainder of tonight and into early tomorrow morning. Interesting stuff on the forecast, that's for sure. And it does show you how in the weather all around really ties into each other and can have some major ramifications in some of these locations. I do wish some sun, sunshine on New South Wales and Queensland. That would be great to see them get a couple of days of sunny weather to just so that they can dry out nicely. Some good fog down in uh, Victoria as well. It was a cold morning and you can see foggy conditions over Omeo at this point in time into the mountainous areas. Temperatures now beginning to rise, but they were a little bit colder overnight.
overnight foggy conditions clearing out of the western half of Victoria. Looks like there's no real rainfall on the forecast for them either and you can see as we push this forecast modelling out into the long range there's really nothing to be writing home about. So Victoria and South Australia and even Tasmania as well don't get your hopes up for any significant rainfall. It's still up north and it's still apparently speaking as you can see over on the left hand side of your screen over west and I'll get to that in just a moment but the drought ongoing for South Australia and Victoria and it's looking rather unpleasant down there. It's an absolute dust bowl for locations outside of the Air Peninsula, Adelaide and then down towards Robin Mount Gambia. It's looking really really dire over there and they do desperately need that rainfall to happen sometime in the next month or it doesn't look like this farming season is going to be a good one at all. Generally speaking we do see a start to the winter weather happen around early May or even towards late May so it hasn't happened yet and we're not expecting it to happen in early April because keep in mind we are still definitely in early April and things do change quite quickly relatively speaking across this time of the year. So expect some rainfall into the early couple of uh, weeks of May but at this point in time nothing on the short and medium range forecast modelling at this point. Anyways over towards the southwest of Western Australia a couple of good storms last night in the Perth metro area. We had lots of lightning, plenty of showers as well coming through. Um, whilst rainfall accumulations weren't significant because the showers were moving through quite quickly, some really good flashes and I think those especially in the northern suburbs picked up some great lightning. It wasn't as flash down in the southern suburbs where I was but it was still relatively impressive and looking north over driving on the freeway. It was certainly quite impressive that's for sure. Caught me off guard on the forecast as well albeit I didn't look at the Perth forecast yesterday and I'm sure if I did I would have noticed it but again it definitely caught me off guard in a couple of good showers and storms now moving into the gold fields in the southern parts of the weed belt. They're now can, uh, beginning to ease off but we do have some decent rainfall coming through throughout the remainder of this weekend and showers and storms expected to continue through tonight and into tomorrow across the northern parts of the weed belt especially into the northeastern parts of the weed belt as another low pressure system develops offshore and this can be the exact same as earlier on in the week or I believe last weekend I think it was. Geez time is absolutely flying. That other low pressure system situated offshore bringing in those humid and rather tropical conditions of the southwest of Western Australia. Plenty of showers and thunderstorms to be talking about as well. It looks like showers are going to be possible throughout the remainder of Sunday and in towards Monday as well for the southwest of WA and into Perth and some good falls expected down to the eastern parts of the Weird Belt and even into the gold fields through Monday as well until that rainfall clears off by Tuesday and some really good rainfall accumulations are possible for those that get days upon days of thunderstorms which is looking completely plausible now as per what the forecast models are suggesting. Widespread falls between 10 to 25 millimetres with isolated totals up to 100 millimetres possible especially into the eastern half of the Weird Belt, the southeastern half of the Weird Belt, so Ravens, Thorpe, Hyde and Salmon Gums, those locations could get some pretty significant rainfall accumulations, the chance of some significant rainfall accumulations. However, more widespread totals will be between those more disappointing numbers, but still good numbers of 5 to 25 millimetres or so. Rainfall will pipe up again then much later on into the forecast period, more showers and thunderstorms next weekend, which is going to give way to some heavier rainfall accumulations around the Esperance and the Salmon Gums area. You can see they're expecting triple digit rainfall accumulations by the looks of things after about Thursday and into Friday. More showers and storms ongoing there. This is not unusual weather for this time of the year, but I do find that nearly every year we get a week of more turbulent thunderstormy activity across the southwest of Western Australia between March, April and May and this definitely looks like the week here where we've got that low pressure system extending down and the humid weather combining with the cooler uh, weather coming up from the southern ocean and as such we're seeing plenty of showers and thunderstorms developing across the southwest of Western Australia which is good to see. I mean the rainfall very welcome. It's been very pleasant over the last couple of days. Uh, the weather has been at least and the showers last night were very welcome and very pleasant indeed. And it was nice to have some thunderstorms as well, some exciting weather over in the southwest of Western Australia. Those of you over in New South Wales and Queensland, especially up in far north Queensland, are probably going to judge us Perth, uh, over in Perth very heavily for this, but we love the rainfall. We can't get enough of the snuff, and then when we do see thunderstorms on the forecast, the city goes nuts. It's all people will talk about for the whole day, excited for thunderstorms, excited for the rain later on, and generally speaking, they completely bust out. So people down here get very excited for these thunderstorms, and when they do eventually pull off, we're very, very excited for them indeed, because we don't get many of them. A day like we had last night will only happen a couple of times a year. So very exciting stuff indeed. And again, I'm probably getting laughed at behind the computer screen for people over in at Queen, uh, Queensland and New South Wales and over in the Northern Territory. With this kind of weather is the norm and it happens for weeks and weeks and weeks on end. And I can imagine if the weather like that happened for weeks upon weeks over in the Southwest of WA, I'd get pretty sick of it as well. But 
Again, taking it as it comes, it is very pleasant indeed. It's been a long-winded forecast update this morning. I do hope you've enjoyed it, and if you have, then please consider leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Nearing 40,000 subscribers, so if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. The support is much appreciated. Interesting stuff happening over in the Northern Territory, especially with the developing tropical cyclones over there. So certainly something that I'm going to keep close tabs on, but that is all for me today. A special shout-out, of course, to the channel sponsors. Their names are on screen right now, and again, I could not run the show without them. So thank you so much to all of them mentioned right now and i'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye